Hi, this is Robert Astron at livingpianos.com, your online piano store, with a viewer question. How to deal with a new piano? You might think you get a new piano, you set it up in your home, maybe tune it, and you're done. Well, it's not quite that simple, but that's the first part. Of course, you want to get it moved to your home, but where to put it in your home? And how much to tune it? And is there other things you have to do with it? Quite a bit, actually, to get optimal performance more than that, if you want to have longevity of your investment, here are some guidelines for you. So choosing a spot for your piano, there's a lot that goes into that, and I have other videos on the subject about acoustics and space issues and things like that, but let's just talk about the piano itself and what the piano wants. You might think, should you put it on an outside wall? Does it matter if a window's nearby? People ask all sorts of questions, and you know what? You can bottom line it this way. If it's a place you would be comfortable sitting day in, day out, your piano will do just great. On the other hand, if it's a place where the sun beats in and you'd be hot and sweaty and uncomfortable, your piano will suffer as well. Did you know that after just a few weeks or months with direct sunlight can destroy the finish of your piano? I can't tell you how many times I've seen pianos that people offer us for sale where where the fly lid folds over on the grand piano, you unfold it and it reveals a darker color because the piano has been kept open all the time. So the finish in that folded part never gets exposed to the sunlight, yet the rest of it does and you get a two-tone lid. So avoid direct sunlight. Avoid, here's the, the real nemesis. You want to destroy a piano quickly? I'm sure you don't. So this is why you must avoid this. Imagine a piano, an upright up against a wall where there's a hot air vent behind it. Or, same thing with a grand piano. If you have a vent blowing, now a cold air return is not a problem since it's pulling the air. But if you have a hot air vent or an air conditioning vent blowing on your soundboard, it's, it could cause all sorts of problems. It could destroy the soundboard if it's heat. It will affect tuning stability. So just find a place that has the most moderate temperature and humidity. Really, around 45 to 50 percent humidity is ideal for a piano. It doesn't really become an issue unless there's prolonged periods of single-digit humidity or 80, 90 percent humidity on a regular basis. Humidity will rust parts out and kind of gum up the action as all the felt parts. There's thousands of felt bushings. They absorb the moisture and everything gets kind of sluggish. Excessive dryness can crack wood joints. It can dry out the leather and the felt, make the action noisy. If you have these issues, treating the room is the best solution with air conditioning to mitigate humidity or a dehumidifier, uh, or you may need to add humidity in the room. Even house plants can help with that. You can get a simple humidity gauge to find out what the humidity level is in the room where you're putting your piano, so you can make an effort to provide a good, stable environment. Now, if you're a person, maybe you live on the beach or something, and you're not going to keep your windows closed. After all, you have to balance your life with your piano, and uh, sometimes there are compromises that are made. A damp chaser system or a piano lifesaver system can either add or take away humidity, as the case may be. It has a humidistat that measures the humidity under your piano and provides a stable environment for it. So now you have your piano, you get it tuned up. Is there anything else to be done? Well, if it's a brand new piano or a piano that's just been rebuilt, it will require more maintenance within the first couple of years of ownership as things settle in, strings stretch, and things of that nature. So you might be able to get by with a couple of tunings a year when you go from heat to air conditioning and later in the season back again. And that's why it's important to tune your piano at least twice a year because it may sound okay, but the whole piano could shift down or even up and you might not know it. There are simple apps you can get on your phone that are tuning applications that can tell you if your piano is A440. Play the A above middle C, take a look at your tuner, and see if it's spot on. If it's starting to show 438, 437, or something of that nature, it's certainly time to get your piano tuned, because once the piano drops in pitch substantially, it'll require a couple of tunings just to get it back again, so you really want to stay on top of that. Other things that you can do are 
whenever your tuner comes, even if your piano is immaculate, brand new, or in great condition, each time they come, if there are little things that can keep it on that high level, minor regulation or lubrication or, or fine voicing selectively, if the tuner's out there already, it's not a big deal to spend a few extra minutes and keep your piano on the highest possible level rather than letting things build up over time until you have hundreds of dollars worth of work and you had a degraded experience all that time. Because to get a piano technician just to come to your home is going to be a pretty big expense, but once they're there, take advantage of them. Speaking of which, get the best piano technician you could find. Ask around. If there's a local concert series or symphony orchestra of note, see if you can find out who tunes and maintains concert level instruments so that you can get the best tuner. You can't believe the difference it makes just in the preparation of a piano to get the optimal performance. Thanks so much for the great questions. Again, Robert at livingpianos.com. I'll see you next time.